1994 was the year it all started, after numerous attempts at trying to enter the video game market, including failed partnerships with both Nintendo and Sega, Sony decided to go it alone and released their first console, the PlayStation. Launching in Japan on December 3rd with CD-ROM technology that allowed for the most impressive 3D graphics of the time, the PlayStation got off to a strong start in Japan, with its sales bolstered by huge releases such as Ridge Racer. The PlayStation wouldn't hit North America until 1995. At E3 that summer, Sega revealed that its Sega Saturn Saturn would launch for $399 and would be released months ahead of schedule. Straight after, Sony took to the stage to reveal the PlayStation price and, well, see for yourself. $299. Launching with titles such as Rayman and Ridge Racer, with Wipeout following closely behind, the original PlayStation sold 2.2 million units in just over a year and became the first console to sell over 100 million units, which it did so in just under a decade. Sony also launched the PlayStation Link cable just in time for Christmas 1995, so that players could connect their consoles and play co-op or multiplayer games on two separate TVs. The PlayStation was selling gangbusters, and 1996 was packed full of critically acclaimed third-party games. Franchises like Crash Bandicoot and Resident Evil were released and became huge hits. Tomb Raider was such a smash hit on PlayStation that Sony quickly negotiated a deal with Core Design to make the series a PlayStation console exclusive, which it remained as until 2000. In 1997, Sony continued to build its library of beloved games. Grand Theft Auto and Gran Turismo arrived, along with sequels to Crash and Tomb Raider, as well as the world's most famous rapping dog. Sony also started making hardware revisions, with the PlayStation controller getting an overhaul. Two thumbsticks and rumble support were added to the controller, and it was released with the name Dual Analog Controller. It was revised once more to add rubber grips and change the handles and shoulder buttons. They called it the DualShock. And in 1998, one game would take advantage of the DualShock's new vibration feature to break the fourth wall. Psycho Mantis would ask you to put your controller down and make it vibrate to demonstrate his psychokinesis abilities. 1999 saw the launch of a new peripheral for the PlayStation, the Pocket Station. Inspired by the Dreamcast's visual memory unit, it was a memory card with a screen on it, and certain games like Final Fantasy VIII could transfer mini-games onto the Pocket Station for you to play on its LCD screen. It was only ever released in Japan, but demand for it globally wasn't high. Everyone was too busy gearing up for what the millennium would bring. <laughs> The PlayStation 2 launched in 2000, and it was hugely successful. In Japan, several thousand people queued up in Akihabara to try and get their hands on one on launch day. The console went on sale at midnight, and it was sold out by 10am. Not only was it backwards compatible with PlayStation games and hardware, it was the first console to play DVDs. Despite its hardware not being the most cutting edge, PlayStation had a huge fan base, and many franchises that people were eager to see more installments of and they wouldn't have to wait long. 2001 was a boon for PlayStation 2 owners, with new Grand Theft Auto, Final Fantasy, Silent Hill, and Metal Gear Solid games, as well as the debut of now acclaimed titles like Eco and Devil May Cry. Sony also launched its online service for the PS2 in Japan, allowing for multiplayer and co-op in select titles. The service would launch in 2002 in North America and would be supported by a number of titles. SOCOM would be one of the first console games to support voice chat. Sly Cooper debuted on the PS2 that same year, as did Ratchet & Clank. Developers Sucker Punch Productions and Insomniac Games would actually be acquired years later by Sony to make games solely for PlayStation. In 2003, Sony released the iToy, a camera that would plug into the console and allow players to play motion-activated mini-games or dance along to pop hits. By the end of the year, it had sold almost 2.5 million units in North America and Europe. PlayStation's foray into peripherals didn't end there. In 2004, it released SingStar mics to get us all karaokeing from the comfort of our own homes. The PlayStation Portable also launched in Japan, with Ken Kutaragi, one of the original engineers behind the PlayStation, calling it the Walkman of the 21st century. 
Seeing how successful DVD support had been for PS2, Sony ensured that the PSP was a multimedia powerhouse too. It could play music, movies, and of course games, as well as surf the web. The PSP launched worldwide in 2005, and over the course of its lifespan, over 1,300 games would be released for the system. The PS2, meanwhile, hit a huge milestone that year, 100 million units shipped, doing so in just over five years compared to the PlayStation's 10. Prototypes of the PS3 were shown at E3 that year, along with games like Metal Gear Solid 4, but the biggest takeaway was the controller's very… distinct new look. But the PS2 still had some life in it yet, with some incredible and important games being released on it in 2005, including the original God of War and Guitar Hero, which you may not know started life as a PS2 exclusive. 2006 was a year of saying goodbye to the past and hello to the future. After hitting 100 million units sold on the original PlayStation, Sony ceased production on its first console. At E3 that year, all anyone could talk about was the PS3, but for all the wrong reasons. When first announced, it was incredibly expensive, with the 60GB model retailing for $600. The console launched in North America and Japan later that year, but the rest of the world had to wait until 2007. The PS3 had a Blu-ray drive, and parts for its production were in short supply. But the Blu-ray support in the PS3 proved crucial in establishing Blu-ray discs as the new dominant home media format, RIP HD DVDs. The PS3's online functionality was far greater than the PS2's. The PlayStation Network served as an online hub where players could add friends and earn trophies from completing in-game feats. The PlayStation Store allowed players to purchase and download games straight from their console. The Boomerang controller from E3 2005 was no more. Instead, the 6-axis controller came with the PS3. The wireless device could sense motion, but lacked the vibration from previous consoles due to an ongoing lawsuit with developer Immersion over the use of haptic feedback in controllers. But it would be added back in in 2007 when Sony and Immersion decided to end the ongoing legal battle and the 6-axis was replaced with the DualShock 3 in Japan, with a worldwide release the following year. A follow-up to the eye toy called the PlayStation Eye was also released, allowing for more mixed reality gaming. It was bundled with a program called iCreate, which allowed users to capture and edit their own video content by filming it through the camera, a precursor to a lot of the share functionality that would come with the PS4 and 5. 2007 also marked the launch of one of Sony's biggest franchises, Uncharted. In 2008, PlayStation Home launched. Marketed as a social environment that was free to explore using an avatar, PlayStation Home was a strange mix of Second Life meets gaming arcade. Users could create an avatar, play games, or watch movies with friends, or even do up their own apartments. Big game releases that year included Metal Gear Solid 4 and Little Big Planet. Sony launched an updated model of the PS3 in 2009, the PS3 Slim. They also changed the PlayStation logo because of the close resemblance to Sony's Spider-Man movies, and a game called Demon's Souls birthed a major new genre of games. 2010 was a big year for PS3. PlayStation Move motion controllers launched, and with them, a slew of games like iPad and SingStar Dance. The PlayStation Plus online service also launched that summer, offering demos, discounts on games, and cloud storage for saved files, as well as two free games every month. Unfortunately, being able to play multiplayer games online also fell under the subscription model. But that wouldn't be the worst thing to happen to PSN. That would come in 2011 with the PlayStation Network hack. Over 77 million PSN accounts were compromised, and while the issue was being dealt with, Sony took the entire PSN service down for around three weeks. Sony offered two free games per system and 30 days of free PS Plus to its users as an apology. The company estimated that the hack cost them $171 million. At the end of 2011, Sony launched the PS Vita in Japan, which made its way to the rest of the world in 2012. Designed by Takashi Sagabe, the designer of the original Walkman, the Vita had an OLED touchscreen and six-axis motion system, as well as a touchpad on the back of the console. Instead of UMD discs like the PSP supported, games came on cards or could be downloaded from the PlayStation Store. Games like Persona 4 Golden, Uncharted Golden Abyss, and Gravity Rush 
all found their home on Sony's new portable system, while titles such as the indie game Journey dominated the conversation on PS3 that year. In 2013, Naughty Dog released one of PlayStation's most defining games, The Last of Us. Praised for its mature and heartfelt storytelling as well as gameplay and visuals, Naughty Dog had cemented itself as one of the best first-party developers in the PlayStation stable and gave the PS3 its swan song title. It released a next-gen version of The Last of Us just a year later. In early 2013, Sony held a PlayStation meeting in New York, where system architect Mark Cerny gave a detailed breakdown of the PlayStation 4 hardware and the new DualShock 4 controller was revealed. Most impressive was that games could be suspended, the new console put into rest mode, and then the game could be resumed with a button press. Digital games could also be played while they were downloading. Gaikai, a cloud gaming service that Sony had bought a year prior, also made an appearance, with the news that PSN would be integrated with the system. Remote play would also be possible on the PS Vita. Multimedia features were expanded upon, sharing screenshots and video clips was now easier than ever, and the PS4 home screen now offered a feed to see what your friends were up to. At E3 that year, the console design was revealed along with the $400 price tag and games which would be coming to the console like Infamous Second Son and The Order 1886. Within 24 hours of the console's launch that November, 1 million units were sold in North America. The PS4 had been criticised for its lack of backwards compatibility, so in 2014, PlayStation now launched. Leveraging Gaikai technology, the subscription service allowed users to play PS3 and PS4 games via the cloud on their consoles or via their PC. In 2015, PlayStation held one of their greatest E3 showcases ever, with huge titles such as Uncharted 4, Horizon Zero Dawn and Shenmue 3. It also re-announced The Last Guardian, which many had feared cancelled, and unveiled Final Fantasy VII Remake. Also that year, one of the console's best exclusives would launch, Bloodborne. 2016 saw a bunch of hardware revisions for the PlayStation ecosystem. The launch model began to be phased out, replaced by the PS4 Slim. A more powerful version of the console, the PS4 Pro, which came with more internal storage and could upscale footage to 4K, was also released. Not done with peripherals, Sony made a foray into VR with the PSVR headset, making VR more affordable and accessible to millions who already owned a PS4 console. 2017 was a relatively uneventful year, but critically acclaimed titles like Horizon Zero Dawn and Persona 5 bolstered the PlayStation 4 catalogue. Meanwhile, the PlayStation 3 was finally discontinued in Japan. Classic PlayStation franchises found new homes on PS4 in 2018. God of War launched in April and was praised for both its gameplay and more mature, nuanced storytelling. Bluepoint Games remade the PS2 classic Shadow of the Colossus to bring it to an entirely new audience on PlayStation 4. Sony finally reversed its stern cross-platform play policy, allowing Fortnite players to game with friends on other platforms. In 2019, Sony didn't attend E3, making it the first that it had ever missed in the show's 24-year history, opting instead to release videos online called State of Play, which were modelled after Nintendo's Directs. Sony made other big moves that year, acquiring Spider-Man and Ratchet and & Clank developer Insomniac Games for $229 million. By December 2019, the PS4 had sold 100 million units. Which brings us to 2020. The PS5 was officially unveiled at the Future of Gaming event in June. At launch, there'll be two models, one with a disk drive and one digital only. In terms of technological improvements, the PS5 plays games in native 4K and features a solid state drive that decreases load time significantly. The console also supports ray tracing, 3D audio, and backwards compatibility with 99% of PS4 games. A new controller, the DualSense, contains a microphone, haptic feedback in its triggers, and a dedicated create button to take screenshots and share clips with your friends. PlayStation 5's UI has had a major overhaul, adding activity cards that allow you to jump into specific parts of a game you're playing, track trophies, and even get walkthroughs picture-in-picture picture as you're playing. Launch titles include Spider-Man Miles Morales, Sackboy A Big Adventure, and Demon Souls, remade by Bluepoint. 25 years and a whole lot of history. There's still more to come in PlayStation's story and we'll always have the latest. Thanks for watching, keep your eyes peeled to GameSpot.